Well, hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about something that I think is really going to help you guys who are asking me about how to improve post acne dark marks or dark marks related to sun exposure, photo aging dark marks. Issues surrounding hyperpigmentation predominantly affect people who have what's referred to as Fitzpatrick phototype three and higher. So if you're not familiar with the Fitzpatrick phototypes, um, I will put a schematic here to show you, but basically it goes from one to six and it's essentially a way of describing how an individual skin responds to ultraviolet radiation. People with darker skin types, they don't typically burn, but their skin does tan very easily. And when we're talking about issues related to hyperpigmentation, it's those groups that are more at risk than those who are Fitzpatrick one and two. One and two phototypes will burn. When it comes to fading hyperpigmentation, you cannot underestimate how much protecting your skin from ultraviolet radiation is gonna make a huge impact. This is underplayed and underplayed and underplayed in the skincare market, but I'm here to tell you as a dermatologist, it's the single-handed most important thing that you can do. We have known for decades and decades that ultraviolet radiation from the sun damages the collagen in our skin, contributes to photoaging, upregulates pigment production in an abnormal fashion, contributing to hyperpigmentation and persistent pigmentary um, abnormalities. But we've now started to learn that some of that electromagnetic radiation spectrum, specifically the visible light portion that we see with our eyes, also plays a major role in hyperpigmentation and possibly photo aging as well. What is visible light? Well, it's the light that we see with our eyes. And basically you can think of the visible light spectrum as the colors of the rainbow. And the blue indigo violet area of that spectrum contributes to hyperpigmentation. Where does this light come from? Well, the majority of the light that does this comes from the sun. But don't forget, this visible light also comes in through the window. So it doesn't mean just the sun exposure that you receive while you're standing outside. Visible light doesn't just come from the sun though. It comes from televisions, it comes from our phones, it comes from overhead light bulbs, and it comes from certain therapeutic devices. So as with anything in medicine, it's not the poison, it's the dose. We get the most damaging, intense doses of visible light from the sun. As it stands, we don't have a clear picture to what extent uh, visible light plays a role in photo aging for people who have Fitzpatrick phototype one and two. It seems as though it plays a major role, however, in Fitzpatrick phototypes three and higher, three, four, five, and six. The type of light from the sun that is what we are concerned with here is HEV. That stands for high energy visible light. And it's this type of HEV light from the sun that is responsible for fast onset and persistent hyperpigmentation in people with phototypes three, four, five, and six. There's actually a mechanism behind this. In Fitzpatrick phototype three and higher, their melan the, the melanocytes, the cells that make pigment, they have a, a protein on the cell surface called opsin-3 that is induced by those wavelengths of visible light specifically, and a downstream consequence of activation of that opsin-3 is abnormal hyperpigmentation. So there's a true mechanism that ties the wavelengths of blue light from the sun to persistent and early onset and long lasting hyperpigmentation in people with phototypes three, four, five, and six. We have clinical studies in actual people where they isolate just the visible light, just these wavelengths and visible light and expose small patches of the skin and show immediate and persistent pigment darkening just with the visible light, no ultraviolet radiation, just with the visible light alone. I will insert some images here taken from papers to show you guys the data on actual human skin when it's exposed to these pro, what are referred to as pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light, the high energy uh, visible light wavelengths, blue and, blue and violet wavelengths. You can see just the visible light alone results in hyperpigmentation, but visible light plus ultraviolet radiation specifically UVA, the part of the sun's UV spectrum that penetrates really deep into the skin and destroys our collagen, 
you can see that the combination of those two things is really a double hitter. So what does that mean moving forward? Well, if you have Fitzpatrick photo type three and higher, you need to concern yourself with protecting your skin, not only from UV, specifically UVA as it re relates to hyperpigmentation, but also these pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. How can you protect yourself from those wavelengths? Well, let's take a look at sunscreens. What sunscreens, if any, actually protect against these wavelengths? As it stands, the only sunscreen ingredients that will truly filter out and block these pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light are large particle zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. When I say large particle, I mean greater than 200 nanometers. So those are active ingredients in mineral sunscreen. When you have a sunscreen whose zinc and titanium dioxide particles are that large, it is opaque white. This is not cosmetically acceptable for Fitzpatrick phototype three, four, five, and six. I mean, this is basically a white paint. It tends to be harder to apply in an even fashion as well. And you'll find mineral sunscreens that don't leave as striking a cast and that's because the manufacturer has made the particles smaller and smaller so they disperse more evenly and don't have as strong of a cast. But in doing so, it sacrifices that visible light protection. So you can no longer rely on those mineral-only sunscreens as, visible, as protecting you against visible light. Is there any other ingredient? Yes, the ingredient iron oxides, which you will find in tinted sunscreens, has been shown to protect specifically against the pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light that contribute to early onset and persistent um, hyperpigmentation in Fitzpatrick phototypes three and higher. But it's obvious that visible light plus UVA, that combination is really what you need to focus on protecting your skin from. What will, what will protect you against those UVA rays? Unfortunately, here in the United States, the sunscreen ingredient that we have at our disposal to protect against those wavelengths of UVA is avabenzone. It's not the most reliable UVA blocker in the sense that it degrades and so you lose some protection with time. We also have our mineral actives, zinc oxide specifically, will protect pretty well into uh, throughout the UVA spectrum. Depending on the size, of course, larger particles may offer better protection, although this varies a lot from manufacturer to manufacturer. Here in the States, unfortunately, we don't have clear-cut standards for UVA protection, so there's really no way for you as a consumer or me as a dermatologist to gauge the extent of UVA protection from a sunscreen. But zinc oxide is probably, I would say, your best bet. Um, because uh, the avabenzone present in our chemical sunscreens, it's just not as stable. If you want to go with avabenzone, I suggest choosing a sunscreen from manufacturers L'Oreal or Johnson & Johnson. They're like Neutrogena, CeraVe, uh, La Roche-Posay, these companies. And the reason I say that is not because I have any stock or vested interest in these companies whatsoever. It's because they have a long-standing track record of R&D and to develop, research and development of sunscreen filters, and they have developed methodologies for and, and techniques and formulations for stabilizing that avabenzone. It's not to say that other manufacturers aren't doing this. I just haven't seen the breadth of data from other manufacturers that I've seen from these companies. So honestly, my opinion is just what I know, that Neutrogena, or, or the R&D from L'Oreal and Johnson & Johnson is solid, and I have the most confidence in those, in those manufacturers of chemical sunscreens. Your next Next option, however, which is a little challenging here in the States, but is doable, is to get your chemical sunscreens from overseas. Chemical sunscreens that have Mexoril and Tinosorb offer superior protection against UVA in comparison to avabenzone alone. Now, some of you may interject and say, well, wait a minute, I heard that chemical sunscreens are not good for people with melasma because they can actually worsen hyperpigmentation. There is definitely an element of truth to that because a lot of chemical filters can be irritating uh, to people, especially people with sensitive skin. And anytime you have irritation, it's pressing the gas pedal on hyperpigmentation mechanisms. That's something you also have to factor in when you are addressing hyperpigmentation is 
is irritation. Anything that's irritating to the skin is going to worsen hyperpigmentation. So it's definitely something that you have to back off on. When it comes to the chemical sunscreens that we sell here in the States, namely the ones with avabenzone, no matter the manufacturer, they definitely can be irritating. The chemical sunscreens from Europe and Japan that have Mexoril and Tinosorb, they're much easier for sensitive skin. Uh, it's not to say that everybody will get along well with them, but they are much easier to tolerate. I think it's just that they have more filters at their disposal, so they have more ingredients basically to work with to make a product that's not going to be irritating. The last thing that I wanna talk about with you guys is this question and concern surrounding wearing sunscreen while indoors. Do we need it? And do we need it to protect us from things like our computers, our TVs, overhead bulbs that are emitting these pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light and potentially affecting our skin? The short answer is yes, you absolutely should be wearing sunscreen while you're indoors but it's not so much to protect you from your TV and your phones and devices and the overhead bulbs. It is to protect you from the light that's coming in through the window glass. So in these studies, the dosage of, of visible light from the sun equated to one and a half hours of sun exposure, but you're getting the, that visible light exposure through window glass and you certainly can encounter that through being indoors all day and just casually going in and out here and there to you know, take the trash out or whatever, you definitely can get there much easier than you may realize because visible light as well as UVA, UVA those are those rays that feed right into hyperpigmentation. UVA and visible light, they both come in through window glass. You do need to protect your skin from those wavelengths. What about the stuff that we're exposed to through overhead bulbs, computer screens, TVs? The dosages from those are thought to be too low to make a difference. For example, you would need to sit in front of TV for about 10 hours to get to the dosage that, uh, that you, you get from one and a half hours of, of the sun exposure. You'd have to sit in front of a TV for 10 hours. But, so we know that but we don't really have a solid understanding how cumulative exposures over time affect the pathophysiology of diseases of hyperpigmentation. So basically there's a big unknown there when it comes to, when it comes to TVs and phones, smartphones, tablets, computers, and overhead bulbs, cumulatively what their contribution is. And knowing that you're still getting exposure through window glass, it's definitely, definitely important, especially if you are attempting to rectify post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or melasma or sun-induced hyperpigmentation, any of those. If you're attempting to remedy those, you know, this is something that you may want to be more aggressive about. For phototypes one and two, you definitely could make the argument that it's overkill to be wearing uh, sunscreen and reapplying it while you're indoors to protect against these pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light that you might be exposed to through your TV, smartphones, tablets, etc. You know, it's a big unknown, but as the data stands now, there's no data to support doing that. But for phototypes three and higher, specifically those people who are coping with issues related to pigmentation, it definitely is important. But during daylight hours, regardless of your phototype, remember UVA is still coming through window glass. So if you are indoors all day long, be aware that you are getting ultraviolet radiation exposure through the window. And we have come to learn that that definitely is likely contributing a lot to how our skin ages and our risk of skin cancer cumulatively. So I do recommend wearing sunscreen while you are indoors during the day and sun, there's sun coming through the window. And of course, for people with phototypes three and higher who are trying to get rid of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, making every effort to get it to fade, I recommend doing a tinted sunscreen definitely while you're indoors and consider wearing it into the evening. It can't, you know, you don't need to go to bed with it. I mean, you kind of have to work out what's, what you're willing to sacrifice, what you're willing to incorporate into your life, how much it matters to you, you know, and that sort of thing. But I mean, if you wanna be really aggressive, then yeah, go ahead and keep wearing it or wear an opaque dressing over, over the area. That may sound super extreme, but say you have, say you have a, a spot on your cheek, just a solitary spot that you're trying to fade, covering it with an opaque dressing 
may be very doable to you. And that, in which case, that will protect you against ultraviolet radiation as well as visible light. And it may be a doable thing that you can achieve in your own home and you don't have to keep reapplying sunscreen to that spot. I mean, if you're trying to seriously get things to fade, that is an evidence-based way to do so. It's actually a much better option for the average consumer to actually consider wearing an opaque dressing like say over a solitary persistent area of hyperpigmentation than it is to even chase after a bunch of vitamin C serums and different uh, brightening products because while those products may actually you know, while those products, those ingredients, they do have some evidence to support their use in issues around hyperpigmentation, they all come with a risk of skin irritation. And remember, whenever you have skin irritation, it's pressing the gas pedal on, on hyperpigmentation. The last point that I will make is that if you are someone who knows at baseline your skin heals with a dark mark or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, when it comes to acne, any kind of breakouts, always be hyper aware of the fact that that is the path that your skin could go down and take a proactive approach and consider being, you know, you should really be aggressive with a sunscreen in those situations. But remember, it can help you in the long run to not have post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I get a lot of questions about blue light and I know it's an area where some of the research is not fully complete and we still have a lot of gaps in knowledge, but hopefully I was able to share with you guys that we have a true mechanism of action for which blue light contributes to hyperpigmentation in people with phototypes three and higher. We have clinical evidence that it does and we have clinical evidence that interventions, namely sunscreens with iron oxides and opaque dressings can help to reduce that issue. The extent with which you need to be concerned with lights and devices and things like that, it's probably actually gonna vary quite a bit depending on your background skin type and what issues you are coping with and kind of how far in you wanna go with this. Um, so I hope this vid was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.